Welcome, viewers, to the Michigan Post Council News Special Report, where equine matters in Michigan. I'm Doug Damon. And I'm Tammy Tyler with the Michigan Horse Council. Thank you for joining us today, ladies and gentlemen. Since 1973, the Michigan Horse Council has been preserving and protecting uh, the equine industry here in Michigan, as well as educating and informing individuals about uh, what it means to uh, own a horse here in Michigan. Since our last report this past spring, we hope many of you have had a chance to get back outside, uh, away from the pandemic, uh, to get a chance to start enjoying life as we knew it under a normal circumstance. For many of us now, we are uh, quick, engaged in many activities out in the trails. And today we'll be uh, uh, talking about some of the people that have made a difference here in Michigan. Uh, the volunteers, like you good folks out there, have been first responders, uh, helping people get the vaccinations, uh, getting helping people out in food lines. Um, as well as here at the Michigan Horse Council, people are out there at all levels of our society volunteering. And today we have a uh, volunteer in profile, Ms. Jean Lijon, who will be dedicated uh, a tribute paid by the American Horse Council out of Washington, D.C. from Mr. Brian Brendel. Well, Tammy, we certainly have a lot to talk about today, but uh, we have a lot of great guests uh, coming in to uh, talk to us and let the people know that the equine lifestyle in our state has generated about $1.6 billion in revenues, uh, considering the fact that they buy trucks, cars, campers, agricultural products that are growing right here in Michigan. Right. Uh, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about Miss Gail Johnson, uh, the Waterloo Hunt Club. Mm -hmm. who's sure. going to be here, because that's close to uh, our, a lot of us here in the Washington County area. Right, it's very local. So Gail Johnson is with Beamer Products. She is a representative, so she carries products for horses and people, helping heal both the rider and the competitor, the horse. And she'll be with us this afternoon. She'll be talking about, with us, the Equine Legislative Day and what that means to her that's coming up. So this fall at the Capitol Lawn down in Lansing, and Gail will be talking to us about what it means to her as an equestrian, as a rider, and also as a, a retailer to sell the products for the people as well. And she's been in the industry many, many years. And it's in a beautiful location, Waterloo Recreation Area, folks. Uh, it's uh, only minutes from Ann Arbor, uh, one of the largest in southeastern Michigan. So we look forward to talking to her. Yeah. Uh, we also have a, a nice lady, uh, Kristen DeVorsch, uh, representing the uh, uh, a, a very unique uh, facility that helps horses that are in need. Uh, she's part of the uh, group Horse Haven out of Howell, Michigan. Mm -hmm. She'll be joining us also as she helps rescue horses that are in distress. Right, and she's a premier rescue center here in Michigan, helping animals in our state, but also nationally. And they're doing a fantastic job of matching up the new horse owners to the horses and they have a three to 5% return rate. And that's really important because it's quite a transition for the horses to come from a new location and then go on to another home. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be having Mr. Grant Filler from the 93rd District State House of Representatives representing Clinton and Gratiot County uh, with a special message for us. And Graham will be talking about why the legislative day is important to him as a legislator. The legislative Action Day. Uh, as people volunteer, they get involved in community and causes they believe in. Uh, so folks, if you're interested in joining us on the front lawn in Lansing, uh, we all look forward to having you. So stay with us here at the Michigan Horse Council News Special Report. Hello everyone, my name is Brian Brindle and I serve as Director of Policy and Legislative Affairs for the American Horse Council based in Washington, D.C. As AHC fights for the horse industry's federal agenda, Often there is no better ally than partners at the state level, such as the Michigan Horse Council. To that end, MHC President Gene Ligon serves as a model for advocacy and engagement on a variety of levels. As many of you know, Gene Ligon has been an avid lifelong equestrian. Since returning to law school in 1988, she limited her equestrian activities to recreational riding on Michigan's horse trails. This soon led her to become an advocate of equestrian interests in recreational trails, zoning, and land use. At AHC, we are lucky that Jean brings this real-world expertise to the table. 
In honor of Jean's contributions to the horse industry, in 2018, Jean was awarded AHC's Van Ness Award for Distinguished Service. The recipient of this award must either work successfully to pass legislation in his or her home state, develop state programs that benefit horse people, or raise the visibility of industry through educational programs. Proving that all politics is local, Ligon has served on her township's planning commission and helped develop its equine-centered master plan in 2005. As a practicing attorney, Jean is a member of the State Bar of Michigan Animal Law Section. Ligon also served as supervising attorney for a 2004 national research project on equestrian communities zoning for the equestrian land conservation resource. Ligon used the results of this research in a report by the Coalition of State Horse Counselors. I hope this brief recap of Jean's service gives you some insights on how to make a difference through your involvement with groups such as the Michigan Horse Council and AHC. Thank you very much for the opportunity to highlight Jean and all the work she performs on our behalf. Insurance is um, something people don't really realize what it does. They, they, oh, they have to buy it. And they, they're looking maybe at the cost. But on the worst day of your life, when you know and you feel safe, I'm protected because I discussed the needs with my insurance agent. And so the worst day of your life, you have the coverage you need. And we put people, we make people whole again. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Michigan Horse Council News Special Report. Our first guest today uh, is, is a real horse lover. Her name is Kristen Devonch, and she's uh, uh, representing the uh, Horse Haven in Howell, Michigan, uh, which is really quite a facility. And you guys are doing some great work there, uh, helping rescue horses and, and helping people learn about horses. Tell us a little bit, Kristen, about uh, Horse Haven. We are, Doug. Thank you for having me today with sure. Horses Haven. Um, we are a equine rescue. Our mission is to rescue, rehabilitate, retrain, and rehome equines. And we do that through physical and uh, medical rehabilitation and training. So our goal is to make every horse that comes to us a good equine citizen and get them on the path to a successful adoption. Horses Haven was established in 1995, so it has been there for a long time. It is a larger rescue, has 23 pastures, 22 acres, 18 wow. stalls. I know it's big. Um, not as big as we'd like, you know, uh, but we have so many volunteers we could really, we could bump that out. Um, so we have a small indoor arena, an outdoor arena, and a, an outdoor obstacle and training rehabilitation course. The heart and soul of how we run our farm on a daily basis is our volunteer base. We have over 100 volunteers that work two shifts a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So it's an wow. AM shift, a PM shift, and um, they take care of the daily needs feeding, turn in, turn out, cleaning of the property and the horses. The farm itself is run by a board of directors and I am the operations manager and we have six employees total that um, take care of all of our volunteers and the horses as well. Uh, we have a property manager and her team and my rehabilitation team that focuses on training and rehoming the horses. And this is an excellent opportunity for somebody out there uh, that's interested in getting involved in horses, never thought that they uh, but might do something like this, they could get a hold of you and they can come volunteer, which yep, can help train can. them as to uh, the do's and don'ts uh, with equine. We do have a lot of people that volunteer. About 75% of our volunteers have never touched a horse. And this is a way for them to get involved with horses. First time horse owners will come to us and volunteer for a couple years to fully understand the care and time and money and investment all around that goes into owning a horse. Indeed. It is a great experience. Good, good, and I can tell uh, you folks do a lot of good over there and I'm sure the horses appreciate it as well. Well, we hope they do. We do, we do um, have an impact on our local equine community with the number of horses we help. In 2020, we adopted 63 horses into new homes and had 59 intakes. So that was 122 horses that were helped in 2020. 
Uh, 2021, we are up to 49 intake, or 49, excuse me, 49 adoptions. And we have had an influx over the last couple of weeks, but we're over 60 intakes this year. So our numbers are looking to increase for how many horses we're gonna be able to help in 2021. How can someone get a hold of you to become a volunteer? They would go to our website, horseshaven.org, and they would fill out an inquiry saying they'd wanna volunteer and one of our team members would get back with them and um, assign them a shift that suits their needs and go from there. Wonderful, Kristen, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. For your great efforts out there uh, helping these animals. Yeah. Stay with us folks here at the Michigan Horse Council News Special Report. As a real estate investor, I look for sharp agents who really know their market. Agents who do so much business, they can find me the right investment property and sell it for the most money without drama. When I need real estate advice in Lansing, I call Brock Fletcher. Brock can bring you an immediate offer or create demand for your home from the hundreds of buyers he attracts every week. That helps you sell your home on time and for the most money. Call the agent I trust, Brock Fletcher, and avoid the drama. Hi, I'd like to introduce you to Gail Johnson. She's going to be talking to us about the Michigan Horse Council Equine Legislative Day. And Gail is an avid equestrian, and she's going to share with us why the Michigan Horse Council Equine Legislative Day is important to her as an equestrian. Well, I'm pleased to be here, and I'm pleased to talk about Equine Legislative Day. I think it's our opportunity as horse people to inform our legislators of how they can know more about the equine industry and obviously any more than we can be experts at everything they can't be experts at everything either so tammy my goal by participating in equine legislative day is to be there to talk to interact with legislators but also to keep in contact with them throughout the year not just that one day you can make that contact they have a face they recognize you if you talk to them from time to time and you reach out to their legislative aides on different issues, you can educate them, you can do follow-up, and by all means, call and thank them when they do something that supports your equine interest or your particular part in the sport. I brought an English saddle today, and I know the Olympics is coming up, so one of the things that um, we have to also inform legislators of there are many different disciplines when we ride and an English saddle is something that I've used over the years in addition to a western saddle for reining um, there's competition that includes hunter jumper um, which jumps way over your head which I've always thought if the horse leaves the ground that's not my thing but we know people do and they win gold medals for it they also show in dressage and show in combinations of cross country where they're doing dressage in the arena, cross country over logs and immovable objects, which is extremely dangerous, and then coming around and doing show jumping in the arena. So lots of different sports. I hope you get a chance to watch it in the Olympics, but the Michigan Horse Council has many different disciplines under their umbrella and also their affiliation with the American Horse Council, which is a great resource for all of us as equine owners and partners to our equine um, family members. Thank you, Gail. We'll have at the Legislative Day, we'll have presentations from different leaders from our associations, our youth programs, our breed associations, show associations. That day is our opportunity to showcase the, the breadth and the depth of the horse industry in Michigan and to bring our top leaders in to share. So we welcome in our horse community, all of our equestrian friends, as well as our legislators to come in and learn more about our Michigan horse industry and the value that we bring to communities. We have an, an introduction from Graham Filler. He is actually my state rep from Clinton County and Gratiot County. And he's going to share why the Legislative Day is important to him as a legislator. Hey, I'm State Representative Graham Filler, and I'm here to talk about the importance of the equine industry and the Legislative Day. And so right off the bat, I'm from mid-Michigan. It's Clinton County. So I've got Tom's Western store in my district. And that just gives me an insight that maybe other representatives don't have 
on the tremendous impact of the equine industry. I mean, people come from all over the state, whether it's for a rodeo um, uh, or to purchase their equipment for, um, for riding. And so we have a financial impact. It's awesome to see um, people come to DeWitt to ride. I think we have Foxbrush Farms here. Um, it, and so, you know, people get excited about the equine industry and um, it's just kind of exciting to be the rep for an area that has such an impact. We have Bex over on 127 that does trailers um, all across the state. I see Bex trailers. Uh, so I just encourage you to stay involved, uh, reaching out to legislators. Um, the Equine Legislative Day is really important. And honestly, the more relationships that are built with, with the legislature, it, what you want to happen is you know, to be sitting in a meeting with a legislator or somebody from state government and them to say, you know, that's a great idea. Um, we're going to try to pass this legislation or, um, oh, um, you know, we're really against that legislation that's coming through. It's bad for horses. I unnecessarily burdens the industry. You just want to make sure you're sort of in the back of everyone's mind when they think about um, horses, agriculture, and the equine industry and all that comes with it too. Um, so I do see a ton of power in that equine legislative day that's held. It's fun. You see the dancers, um, you see the vendors, and I just think that's really important to keep that going. So a personal thank you to Tammy Tyler for keeping me involved. Tammy is of course, Tom's Western store, uh, has been a friend for years and years and years. And uh, I just think it's really important what Tammy and the rest of the group is doing at sort of raising the profile of the equine industry across the state. So any questions, you're welcome to reach out um, to me or my office. Um, I'm, I'm Graham Filler, I'm the state rep from the 93rd, huge supporter of the equine industry and uh, keep doing what you're doing, it's really important. Well, that brings to mind that where I grew up in Jackson County, there were lots and lots of trails and so, my beginning riding experience actually was on a dairy cow. I shouldn't admit that. But it brings to mind that Julie Alexander is chair of the Ag Committee. And when I met her last year, uh, she knew she was going to still be on the Ag Committee, and I asked if I could walk and talk with her. And she said, well, I married a farmer. I used to be a teacher. And so we had a lot in common because I'm a teacher, a retired. So I spoke with her one-on-one, -on -one, and it's an incredible opportunity to be at Equine Legislative Day to have those moments because I got to find out a little bit about her that wasn't about her behind a desk. It was about her background and what she was passionate about and also where she was coming from. And I commented that I learned to ride a horse because I learned to ride a dairy cow first. So we had a good laugh and it's, it's a memory hook for her to remember me and a memory hook for me to remember things about her. Um, in addition to that, my own state rep is Angela Whitwer, and she's on the Ag Committee as well. So I have a really good connection with a couple of people, and getting to know them means that I can pick up the phone, and I can maybe not make a request, but have information, give them some background, and then have a conversation so that I can be a resource for them where they might not have someone else to call. So the trails that I started in Waterloo Recreation Area are still near and dear to my heart. Um, it's a wonderful, magical place, except now I'm riding something with a horse tail instead of a cow tail. <laughs> <laughs> we invite you to join us at the Capitol for our Michigan Horse Council Equine Legislative Day. Thank you, Gail. Thank you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Michigan Horse Council News Special Report. And as we indicated at the start of the program, uh, volunteers come in all sizes and all ages uh, when it comes to the uh, equestrian community. Uh, we have one young gentleman that saw our program this spring. His name is Caleb, an up-and-coming cowboy, if you will, in these modern times of the 21st century. Uh, thank you, Caleb, for joining us. And uh, We were very excited to have you today. And, uh, you have really become uh, enthusiastic about uh, the horses, and you even ride them yourselves, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of horse do you ride? A Palomino and other kinds of horses. And you help uh, uh, take care of these horses? Uh-huh. I guess that's a lot of work, huh? Yeah. Uh, but it's good for you? Yeah. Uh, what do you? What's your favorite thing about uh, horseback riding? Uh, that they get you around faster and they almost go as fast as a car. Well, they go faster than your car. And they um, don't pollute, do they? We have no uh, 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 smoke. Smoke, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is nice, isn't it? Mm. And Caleb, uh, you brought with uh, you some, some of the toys that uh, youngsters your age uh, like to uh, have fun with. Uh -huh. Can you describe some of them for us? So some of them, they're all in the Western community. Did I say yes. that right? Sure. Yay. And so, some Briar toys and some a John Deere tractor. These are the toys that you would normally get on the farm, for a farm. And so, like, this is mythical, so you won't get that in real life, so. Sure. But all the rest are things you would get in real life, so. These are things that uh, kind of inspired you. Uh-huh. And one thing, Caleb, I have to say, I really like that cowboy hat. Mm -hmm. um, you're actually dressed like a cowboy. Tell us yeah. a little bit about what you, you're wearing. So, so, a cowboy shirt with a long sleeve, boot cut pants, belt buckle, and the cowboy pants, and the cowboy hat. And it sounds like you're going to be in the rodeo someday, doesn't it? Yeah. And what, what event do you think you're going to focus on? So, if you're a young one that wants to do a low, bri low rodeo, there's a low bridges rodeo a team, so you can either compete in that or in the big team thing. And so, when we compete at my so we have rodeos at my house, so and I watch probably them all, so this is not horses, but I like bull riding. Bull riding? Well, mm -hmm. you look like you could be a bull rider here someday, so make sure you eat a lot of steak out there. Mm -hmm. Get some muscles on you. Uh, or but, the Bronco, because that's included in horses. Wow, wow. You, got, you got more uh, uh, courage than I do, I have to say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's nice to see so many young people aspiring. Uh, did good things in our community. And Caleb, by uh, I got a film, we're gonna have to head them up and move them out. Uh, so uh, stay with us here, folks, at the Michigan Horse Council News Special Report. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us here at the Michigan Horse Council News. We hope you enjoyed uh, some of the guests that we had and some of the volunteers that we've highlighted. And it's volunteers, folks, uh, that make up the Michigan Horse Council. Many of them are quite talented as well. So for your viewing pleasure, we have a uh, Michigan Horse Council uh, individual that we're going to showcase today in our country music showcase, Miss Nancy Phelan in her beautiful voice. Bex Trailer Superstore sells more aluminum trailers than any other dealer in America, and the brand we trust is Legend Trailers. Bex has carried dozens of trailer brands over the years, and none of them stack up to the Legend Trailers, which are built right here in Michigan by Michigan workers. Visit us here at Bex to see the superior Legend quality firsthand, or give one of our trailer specialists a call to learn more about why Legend is far and away Michigan's number one trailer brand. If you appreciate quality, value, and longevity, then you'll appreciate Bex Trailer Superstore and Legend Trailers. Each October, at Big Creek Trail Ride in the Missouri Ozark Mountains, Danny Powell would make arrangements and encourage me to sing to a large group of wonderful trail riding folks, Peg, Gay, and all the rest. I was scared to death, but loved every minute. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> I 
I've been trail riding all day long, humming a tune as we trot along. Thinking about the things God created. Oh, it's a shame more people don't appreciate it. There's an eagle in the sky, oh, the air smells sweet. Horses feel good splashing through the creek. Mountains so high, oh, the valley below. So many trails gotta be rolled. There's a tick in my britches and a stone in my boot But riding's a thing that I love to do Take a good look at the beauty around you Oh, open your heart, let it surround you There's an eagle in the sky, oh, the air smells sweet Horses feel good splashing through the creek Mountains so high, oh, the valley below, so many trails gotta be rolled. Near the campfire glow, folks gather round, talking good old days, laughing out loud. Telling tales of trails and horses they've loved, saying much obliged to the Lord above. Eagle in the sky, oh, the air smells sweet. Horses feel good splashing through the creek. Mountains so high, oh, the valley below. So many trails gotta be rolled. Gotta be rolled. Well, they've gotta be. You always get the best at Bex Trailer Superstore, the nation's largest trailer dealer. With over 1,500 trailers on 45 acres, you won't find a better selection anywhere. Whether you're looking for an open or enclosed trailer for work or play, you'll find the perfect trailer at Bex. We have flexible financing options through several national and local lenders to offer the most competitive rates and payments from only $69 per month with approved credit. For the best selection of quality trailers at unbeatable prices, call 888 save or visit BexTrailerStore.com.